Hey guys, it's Annie. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm sure you saw by the title, I'm getting a rhinoplasty, which is actually a septoplasty, I think is like the full term for it. So I'm getting my deviated septum fixed as well. And it's gonna be a closed rhinoplasty. I definitely wanted to make sure that I stated that for anyone who is actually getting a closed rhinoplasty because most people don't state that in the video, whether it's open or closed. And I've watched so many videos and it turned out that they have an open rhinoplasty. And then I just watched like this whole video for nothing because the two experiences just aren't the same. Real quick, for those of you guys who don't know the difference, when it comes to a closed rhinoplasty, they actually go in through the nostrils. So they don't open up the nose. Usually in like an open rhinoplasty, They'll cut this part here and then open up your nose and then like they usually break it. He's not gonna be breaking my nose. I don't think that they normally break the nose for closed rhinoplasties. I could be wrong. I just know that he's not breaking mine. I'm sure it just depends on what you need done or if like you have a really crooked nose, I think they normally have to break it or something like that. But like I said, I am getting a septoplasty. So I have a pretty bad deviated septum. I didn't realize how bad it was until I had the CT scan done and they were like, whoa, <laughs> I'm getting that fixed. And I just kind of wanted to come on and talk to you guys. I did take you with me along to my appointment. I didn't take you into my appointment. I explained that a little bit in the vlog portion of this video, but I really wanted to make an intro to this video, talk to you guys about what I'm actually getting done, show you some before and after pictures. And I also edited pictures in Facetune of what I want my nose to look like. So I wanted to show that in this video too. But I wanna start out this video kind of explaining why I wanna get a nose job. I mean, if you guys have been following me for a little while, I'm sure that you know this already. I've talked about this a lot. This is just a huge insecurity of mine. I really don't mind it too much from the front. I mean, since I'm getting it done anyway, I want them to take a little bit of this bulbousness down. But besides that, it's my side profile that's my biggest issue. So, oh, I'll show you guys. This is so like embarrassing to me. But obviously I have like a beak-like look to my nose. So this is this side and then this side. It's something that I've always been so insecure about. In middle school, I remember I dated this guy. I've talked about the story before. I dated this guy and then I broke up with him and then he started calling me Toucan Anne. And that's, I think, when it started making me more aware of my nose. Not that I didn't know that I didn't have like a big nose before, but I don't know. It's just, once someone says something like that, you just really start to pay attention to it and harp on it. So yeah, I wanted this done for a really long time. Now I have the means to do it, so I figure, why not? I'm going to Dr. Kassir in New York. Um, I'm actually going to his Wayne office in New Jersey to get the surgery done. Uh, but yeah, I'll pop up his like Instagram handle or I'll leave it in the description if I remember to pop it up. He's triple board certified and he specializes in rhinoplasty, especially closed rhinoplasty, which I said was the technique that I'm getting done. In my opinion, it's so important to go to someone who actually specializes in whatever procedure you wanna get done. That way there's just less of a risk that there's gonna be complications or that you'll get botched or anything like that. I'm gonna pop up pictures on the side here to show you guys what I'm looking to get done. So I really wanna have this bump shaved down. So I just want more of a straight nose. I don't want like a super curvy nose, like a sloped nose. I know that's really popular. Um, that's just, I feel like it's not gonna fit my face. I just won't like it for me personally. And a lot of people like a really upturned nose. I don't want that either. I just want like a very straight nose here and then just like slightly lift up the tip because when I smile, it droops. So by lifting this slightly, it'll just prevent it from that. But yeah, overall, I don't wanna look like a different person, at least from straight on. I feel like from the side, I'll look like a different person because you're not gonna see like that beaky look. Um, but yeah, if I just get a little bit of the bulbousness shaved down here, I'm still gonna look like myself. I, you know, my goal isn't to look like a different person or anything. That's why it was really important to me to edit my photos in Facetune. So I'm actually editing my own nose instead of just bringing in like a celebrity's nose or someone's nose that I think is really cute. With that, I feel like there's more of a chance that it'll come out the way that you want it to rather than go based off of someone else's bone structure entirely. Like it's still like my bones and my nose, if that makes sense. <laughs> Along with this video, I'll also have like a closed rhinoplasty vlog for you guys where I'll take you like the night before like me getting ready for surgery and everything so you need to wash your hair I need to take um, my antibiotic and I can't eat or drink before the surgery it's like 24 hours or something or not 24 hours I need to stop eating and drinking at 12 like midnight the night before surgery then obviously nothing day of surgery that's honestly what I'm most concerned about I already talked about it in the vlog but I am like an avid water drinker it's just like I, I just don't know how I'm not gonna be able to drink any water for for that 
period of time. I'm also really scared for the blood work. I haven't gotten that done yet. I'm gonna do that uh, Tuesday. So today is Thursday, May 12th, and I'll have my blood work done on Tuesday. If you guys have been following me for a little while, you'll know that blood is like my biggest fear, so I hate getting my blood drawn. I almost pass out every single time. It's just like a really scary thing for me. I'm like getting choked up like thinking about it. That's gonna be like the scariest part of the surgery, honestly, because I don't care about like them going in and using saws on my nose and things like that. It's like a very specific fear that I can't really explain. I think it more has to do with not necessarily blood. Ugh, I hate even saying the word more like veins. Ugh, ugh, I'm getting so like, whew, I'm getting so grossed out. But anyway, yeah, that's what I'm most scared of. I need to get cleared by my physician or something from the blood test in order to um, get surgical clearance, which I also need an EKG, so I'm going to a cardiologist for that. There's so many tests that I need to get beforehand. Um, I don't know if all surgeons require all of this testing being done or if he's just like super safe, but either way, it's a good thing, it's just, a little nerve-wracking. I also just wanted to prepare you guys ahead of time for that because I just was not aware of all the steps that you needed to take in order to actually get the surgery done. So it's a lot of doctor's appointments, a lot of like specialist appointments, which are normally more expensive than a doctor's appointment. So take all of that cost into consideration as well because I just didn't even think about that. And not that it's a big deal, I would still get it done either way, but it's just something that just was not on my mind at all. I would say overall with doctor's appointments and extra things like that, it probably totaled up to like another thousand dollars. The surgery in total, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about the cost of it. Not that I got a discount or anything because I didn't, but um, yeah, I don't, I just don't know. I don't know if I signed any paperwork talking about that. I signed so many pages when I went in for the pre-op. So I'm a little scared to do that, but he is definitely on the high end, guys. It was very important to me to not go the cheap route. I don't know how people go to like different countries or try to find like the cheapest person to do plastic surgery. I mean, especially for your face, like it's your face, but this is a life decision and you know, I have the means to do so. And that's it. <laughs> I like keep going to like over explain myself and it's like, you know what, whatever. But I'm gonna go to the vlog portion right now. So you guys are gonna see me in my car looking like ghastly white with just like a sheer foundation on. Um, after this full face, you guys are gonna be like, what the hell? I'm gonna look like a different person. Um, but yeah. All right guys, so I am on my way to my pre-op for my rhinoplasty. My nerves are so high right now. I just put some gum on my mouth to just kind of relax me a little bit. I don't even know what I'm really nervous about because I mean, it's not like this is like the surgery day or anything, but I think it's just kind of the unknown because I mean, I've never gone to like a pre-op or anything like that. Whenever I've watched any other rhinoplasty vlogs, it's actually like the day of surgery. I don't think I've watched any for like the pre-op, so I don't know what they're doing today, but after my appointment, I'll fill you guys in so that if you're going through this journey too, you'll know. I'm sure I look like a ghost in my viewfinder. I'd look so pale right now, especially because I just have all this direct natural sunlight on me. And I just have like a base layer of foundation on and I went a little bit lighter than what my skin tone is because I didn't want it to oxidize and have it be all crazy for pictures because I've been following his work and he normally, it looks like he does photos at the pre-op. Um, they did photos when I went in for like my initial like appointment to decide like surgery and all that stuff, but I just wanted to make sure that I looked relatively decent. A lot of people on there I see like have their makeup done, they just don't put like a contour on their nose, but I would just feel so out of place without contouring my nose that I just wouldn't feel comfortable with full glam without that. So I was just like, you know what? It's just gonna be bare faced. Not to mention if he takes photos on the actual surgery day when I'm not gonna have any makeup on, people aren't gonna realize that this is like the same person. <laughs> I'm a little nervous about what people are going to think. I really haven't even told anyone in like my private life. I mean, my mom knows, um, but Ruben's mom doesn't know, like no one, I feel like no one else. Not that I've been like hiding it or anything. Like I don't consider myself a private person, but it's just like, it feels like a weird conversation. Like, oh, I'm getting my nose done. Like just out of nowhere. Isn't that like kind of weird to say? I don't know. But then also I feel like by bringing it up like that, I feel like people feel like they have to be like, oh no, you don't need one, like, and it's like, I don't, <laughs> I don't want like forced compliments. Like I feel that I need it and that's all that really matters. I just hate that there's such a stigma around like vanity. I just don't know why anyone cares, you know? Surgery is such a personal decision 
And if it'll help you become a little bit more confident, why not? And I have the means to do so. I'm going to be 32 next month, which is like after I have my surgery done, I have my surgery first week of June. And then my birthday is June 23rd. So I'm 32. I've given this years of thought. I did a lot of research into the doctor that I was going to, or surgeon rather. So this is not a hasty decision. And of course I'm nervous either way. I definitely have control issues. So that's something that I'm so scared of. Just that, you know, you obviously can't predict the exact outcome of it. I mean, I've done everything that I could possibly do. And now it's up to them, you know? I do feel more relaxed in the fact of I used my own photos that I edited to make it look like how I would like my nose to look. And it's just like kind of some small tweaks. I guess like not small tweaks, but like I'm getting rid of like the, the bump on my nose. I'll pop up pictures and I'll show you guys that if I didn't already. But I feel like from using your own nose and just kind of tweaking it to what you want, I feel like it's I feel like it should be more of a guarantee that it'll come out the way that you want it to rather than just bring in a picture of someone else's nose like a celebrity and say that you want this on your face you know and not that it's a guarantee it's a bad word um, more of a chance that it'll be more accurate to what you're looking for I'm trying to calm myself down I have a pretty long drive which is good to ease my anxiety this surgeon has uh, two offices so I'm going to the one in Wayne for my pre-op he also has um, an office in New York but the Wayne one is just like slightly closer, I think. I mean, the New York one is like maybe two hours and this is like hour and a half. So it's not that big of a difference, but there's actually, I feel like there's parking at this one. Whereas the New York one, it's on like the main like strip thing. I don't know how to explain that. But the main thing that I think makes this all really nerve wracking is that I can't have anyone with me because of COVID. So Ruben can't come to my, my pre-op. I don't even think that he can come to the actual like operation day. I'll find that out today. I mean, there are people who have gone through way worse things. I remember during the pandemic, I think like right in the middle of everything, and maybe in some places they still do this, but they were only allowing just a mother to give birth and not have anyone else in there with her. I cannot even imagine. So this is nowhere close to that. Oh shit, I need to get off here. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Okay. I'm gonna be making a few videos in this series to have you guys come with me. I'm not gonna take the camera in the actual office with me just because like I said, I can't have another person in there and it's gonna be too nerve wracking for me to think of vlogging and then also really paying attention to what's going on. I'm already so stressed out so I don't even want to risk that. But this video is going to be all about my pre-op appointment and then I'll do another one obviously on the surgery before and then I'll probably do like a, a little vlog while I'm getting ready to go into surgery while I'm actually at the facility and then obviously after and then follow-ups throughout like the days up to like the week that I get my cast off. And then I'll do like an after video and then like a Q&A or something to answer all of your questions because I'm sure that if, I mean, I'm not sure that, but if you guys have a lot of questions, I would love to answer them. I've been watching so many vlogs on rhinoplasty, so I know that other people are interested. So I'd like to be able to give my experience. But the reason why I wound up going with Dr. Kassir is, first of all, I did research for a long time. This isn't just like a split decision, like I've already said. I was looking for a surgeon that was triple board certified, which is very important. I guess it's not very important, but it was important to me to make sure that, you know, they've had years of surgeries and they're more than qualified. Not that a double born surgeon isn't, but to have someone who has all their certifications and everything just makes me feel at ease. And he also specializes in rhinoplasty, especially closed rhinoplasty, which is what I'm getting. So they go in through your nostrils to do the surgery rather than open up your nose. From what I understand, it's a better way to get more of a natural result and it's almost not mistake free. I don't really know like the words to describe it, but there's less of a chance to really mess up because you can only, only do kind of like minor tweaks. So he doesn't uh, break the nose or anything like that. I guess he like shaves it down in areas. I don't know guys. <laughs> I just know that he doesn't use, he says in all of his posts, he doesn't use chisels, hammers, he doesn't break your nose. So I, I'm assuming that they just kind of like sand it down and things like that, which is less of an invasive procedure. And it also has uh, minimal swelling and bruising afterwards. If you look at his work, um, I think it's just uh, Dr. Kassir um, 
on Instagram, but you'll see people getting their casts off in like a week. Most of them have like no bruising at all. Some of them will have minimal bruising, um, but I think like those might be just the ones that he actually had to break the nose because he does do open rhinoplasty as well but he specializes in the closed technique. I saw a lot of people who have similar noses to mine and I liked their outcome. I did get a little scared off because a lot of people are into that really like curvy upturned nose and I just don't like that personally, but I know that those people were asking for that type of nose. So I'm trying not to let that like even get in my head because I have seen plenty of his work without doing upturned. He's also probably the most involved surgeon that I've seen on social media. He posts a ton of before and afters for everything that he does, which is great. If you look at other people, like other surgeons' Instagrams, it feels like they're just not that like up to date with being able to show you before and afters. And that's so important in the whole deciding factor. Anyway, I just got here. It took me about two hours with traffic. There was a lot of road work. I had to pee so bad. And because of COVID, they have, um, like a virtual r waiting room so I can't like just go in um so I have to just sit in my car until they call me I'm wondering if I should just keep driving and go to like a, a supermarket or something to run in and pee because last time when I went in for like my consultation I was waiting for like an hour but now I'm scared that they're gonna call me in and I'm gonna be like down the street so I'm trying to decide okay I think I'm gonna go pee because I see other people waiting in their cars around here and I'm like if I'm waiting in a line, that's gonna be awkward. And if I do wind up getting called in right away, then it's like, oh, sorry, let me just run the bathroom. Like, I don't want it to look unprofessional. So I'm just gonna go really quick. See if there's a supermarket around here. I feel like there has to be. Okay, there's a stop and shop. Okay, update. I just got back from the bathroom and I'm um, driving back now. All right, guys, I just got out of the pre-op. I don't even know if I checked in with you guys before they called me in, but I was so like flustered when they like called me and they were like, you're ready to go. And I was like, oh, ah! but everything went good. I pretty much signed my life away with like a hundred papers. So that took some time right now. It's like 4.35 and my appointment was at two, but they took me back at like 2.30. So it's been like an hour and a half, but it's so funny. There was a physician there that was going over all the paperwork and I'm telling you guys, he was like my hype man. He was like, I, I don't, I could kind of beat around the bush when someone asks me what I do for a living. Sorry, there's like someone behind me. Because I don't really like, not that I don't like talking about it, but it's just like kind of a hard thing to explain. And then I don't ever want to be like, here's my page, like look at all my stuff, follow me. Like I'm just not that person. I get like really uncomfortable, like, I don't know. Cause then I feel like other people are like forced to like compliment you or something. It's just like an awkward thing for me. But he was like clicking on all my videos and I was just like, oh my God. He was like telling everybody about it and I was just like, ah! I was just getting like super embarrassed because I don't want people to think that like I told him and I was like, go tell everybody. But I love that guy. I felt very at home. People in Jersey on the border of New York drive insane. Like I've almost had like 10 crashes already. But for the pre-op, pretty much what they did is they just go over everything that you need to do within the next month before surgery. So one of them, I need to go get uh, blood drawn and that that's where your um, physician needs to like okay you to go into surgery and to be under anesthesia and all of that stuff. I need an EKG. I needed a CT scan, which I already got that done, thank God. You need to have a psych evaluation, which I got that done beforehand too. So I think the only things that I need to do are have my blood drawn, which I believe you need to do that within two weeks before surgery. So I have a little bit of time before I can even do that one. Um, and then I need the EKG and to see my doctor to get approved by my physician. But yeah, all of the added expenses, I, it just never occurred to me, like when I signed on for the surgery, obviously, like what's another like thousand, two thousand dollars total when you've already spent so much. All of these other like doctor's appointments and things like that that I need to do are just like, it's really, <laughs> it's really adding up. So if you're also gonna go in for a rhinoplasty, take all of that into consideration. Not that it's a big deal, like I'm not like stressed about it, but it's just something that I just didn't take into consideration. I didn't even think about it. And I mean, I'm glad that they take all of those protocols to make sure that you're healthy before. Holy shit. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. I'm so scared of driving on the streets. To make sure that you're good before you go into surgery. Oh my God, and talking to you guys and focusing on the road right now is very hard. 
I'm not sure if every surgeon um, requires a CT scan, which is, I believe it just shows like where your bones are and like cartilage and everything for your nose. I think it might just be doctors who do closed rhinoplasty because he's not gonna be opening up my nose to see where those things are. So he wants to know kind of a heads up of where everything is beforehand. But there's like a list of like vitamins and things like that that I need to take before surgery. But then I need to fast um, from, I think it's 10 p.m. the day before my surgery, all the way obviously up to my surgery, like I can't have anything to eat or drink, not even water, which was surprising to me. Maybe that's not surprising to anyone else, but I mean, I am a huge water drinker. And when I don't drink water, I feel like I'm, I'm just like a raisin or something. I can feel like the dryness in my hands, it's weird, but I will survive. But yeah, I'll keep you guys updated along the way with everything that I'm doing leading up to surgery. And then obviously day of surgery, I'll be doing a little vlog. But if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below and I'll make sure to answer them in future videos or obviously I'll just respond in comments. But I love you guys and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.